A sliding stone. A 15 kilogram stone slides down a snow covered hill, as you can see in the figure, leaving point A at a speed of 10 meters per second. There is no friction on the hill between points A and B, it's snowy, but there is friction on the level ground at the bottom of the hill between B and the wall. After entering the rough horizontal region, the stone travels 100 meters and then runs into a very long light spring with force constant 2 newtons per meter. The coefficients of kinetic and static friction between the stone and the horizontal ground are 0.2 and 0.8 respectively. Part A. What is the speed of the stone when it reaches point B? Part B. How far will the stone compress the spring? Part C. Will the stone move again after it has been stopped by the spring? Okay. So let's start with part A. Uh, at the top of the hill, at point A, we have a potential energy, initial potential energy equals mgh, which is uh, 15 kilograms stone, 9.8 meters per second square, and the distance uh, you can see in the figure is 20 meters uh, from point A to ground. So this gives us 2,940 joules of initial potential energy. At point B, the final potential energy will be 0 joules. So that's at point B. The initial kinetic energy, remember, it starts traveling with an initial speed of uh, 10 meters per uh, second. So uh, we have one half m v initial square equals to one half 15 kilograms times 10 square this gives us 750 joules of initial kinetic energy final kinetic energy at point b will be one half m v b square okay so another observation is that between uh, the points A and B points A and B uh, there is no friction therefore we should have mechanical energy conservation delta E mechanical should be zero so the change in the kinetic energy plus the change in the potential energy of the stone should be equal to zero the change in the kinetic energy is one half m v b square, which is the final uh, kinetic energy, minus one half m v initial square, initial kinetic energy. Final potential energy is zero. Initial potential energy is m g h. So we find one half uh, m v b square minus 750 joules plus zero minus 2940 joules should be zero so we obtain vb to be 750 plus 2940 multiplied by 2 divided by the mass 15 kilograms square root so this gives us square root of 492 which is 22.2 meters per second so uh, I have the minimum number of significant figures is 3 here so that's uh, what I should uh, report okay uh, or symbolically we could say uh, that uh, one half m v b square minus one half m v initial square plus zero minus m g h equals to zero implies uh, because we have the masses cancelling here and if I multiply it by two 
vb square minus vi square uh, minus 2gh equals to 0 or vb is vi square plus 2gh square root. So that's the uh, symbolic answer. Now, uh, after point B, we're traveling on a rough surface to hit a, a spring and compress the spring. So this is uh, the travel from point B to the, towards the spring and we hit the spring. We want to know the maximum compression given that we have a rough surface. So um, compressing the spring by delta x max, uh, the total distance traveled on the rough surface is 100 meters plus delta x max, right? Because 100 meters was uh, the distance uh, between point B and uh, the spring. So we, the stone travels 100 meters and then runs into the spring. So uh, the kinetic energy at point B was one half mvb square the final kinetic energy when we reach maximum compression will be zero the stone will stop initial potential energy stored in the spring is zero joules final potential energy stored in the um, spring will be one half k delta x max squared all right so that if you write the change in the mechanical energy of the system, the stone plus the spring, it will be delta K plus delta U, which will be equal to the work done by the external force on the system, which is friction. So the friction does not do any work. It actually converts mechanical energy to heat. So it's going to be minus FK times um, 100 plus delta x max and here the kinetic friction will be equal to mu k times the normal force mu k mg so this is a uh, coefficient of kinetic friction was 0 0.2 times 15 times 9.8 this gives us 29.4 newtons for kinetic friction so uh, we have final pot kinetic energy zero, initial kinetic energy one half uh, 15 times Vb square. Vb square is 492. Uh, if you remember here, Vb was square root 492. And then we have uh, initial potential energy is uh, zero, final potential energy is one half k delta x max squared the spring constant here is two newtons per meter this is the force constant so we have one half times two delta x max squared is equal to the kinetic friction force minus 29.4 newtons times 100 plus delta x max okay so uh, if we rewrite this equation, first we note that these twos cancel. We obtain uh, delta x max squared minus 3690 is equal to minus 2940 minus 29.4 delta x max so this gives us a quadratic equation for delta x max delta x max square plus 29.4 delta x max 
minus 750 equals 0. So delta x max will be minus 29.4 plus or minus, but we will take the positive root, 29.4 square plus 4 times 750 divided by 2a, which is a is 1, so it's 2. So this gives us, up to three significant figures, 16.4 meters of compression, maximum compression, on the spring. Now, part C. Uh, when we reach the maximum compression at delta x max, the spring force will be Fs. Uh, k times delta x max in magnitude, so this will be 2 times 16.4, which is 32.8 newtons. The maximum static friction, static friction force, is Fs max coefficient of static friction times the normal force mu s mg coefficient of static friction was 0.8 times 15 times 9.8 which gives us 118 newtons so we see that since the spring force which is trying to uh, force the block to move back so after maximum compression to move back to point B is what it is trying to do, but it is less than the maximum value of static friction, which means it does not move again. So after reaching a maximum compression, it won't move again. All right. So let's summarize what we said here. We have a stone that is sliding down a hill with an initial speed 10 meters per second, a, mac a total height of 20 meters to reach point B. So between points A and B, kinetic energy is increasing, potential energy is decreasing, so we can calculate the speed at point B by writing the change in the mechanical energy to be zero because there is no friction uh, in this path between A and B. After B, we travel a 100 meter distance to reach a spring and start compressing the spring. The total distance traveled on the rough surface will be 100 plus delta x max. We have an initial kinetic energy at point B, but final kinetic energy will be zero when we reach maximum compression on the spring. The spring has zero potential energy initially it's relaxed final potential energy stored will be one half k delta x max squared so the change in the mechanical energy of the system will be equal to the work done by the external force on the system which is friction and the friction does not do work so it uh, consumes energy the friction force is actually uh, pointing to the left in minus i hat direction, displacement is in plus i hat direction, so the work is negative, minus fk times 100 plus delta x max. And the kinetic friction is mu k times the normal force. So by substituting the kinetic friction force here, we solve for delta x max to be 16.4 meters. When we reach maximum compression, a spring force will develop trying to relax the spring back to its equilibrium position. And that will be k times delta x max due to Hooke's law, which is 32.8 newtons. So we have to compare this with the maximum static friction we can have, which is mu s times the normal force. Mu s mg is 118 newtons. Since the spring force is not enough to uh, get get over this uh, static friction, a static friction will prevent the motion, it won't move again.